Next, scrubbed a grumpy voice. Thank goodness, said Rachel. Her arms were aching from pretending to hold a dog in the same position for so long. But at last, a goblin in a smart pink uniform was stalling at them from the doorway of the hut. The words Gorgeous Goblin Grooming were printed on the uniform in swirly gold letters. She walked into the hut with Serene and Trusty close behind her. Inside, a goblin was standing in the middle of the hut, wearing the same pink uniform. He was holding a shaver in one hand and a nail clipper in the other. A brush and a comb were dangling from his side. What's that? he asked. He asked nastily, looking at the bundle in Rachel's arms. Rachel shook out the cloak as Trusty shut the door. Serene waved her wand and their goblin disguises melted away. The goblin gaped at their fairy wings. Get away from me, he screeched. We just want to. No. He snatched up a rucksack from a chair, yanked the door open and fled into the street. There was no time for another magical disguise. The fairy zoomed after him, swooping into the air to follow the running pink feeder. His rucksack bobbed up and down on his back as he ran. Did you hear a yap? said Serene. Suddenly, a little brown head poked out of the top of the rucksack. Two silky ears pricked up and the little nose widowed. Widows, Serene cried. She zoomed along even faster, but the goblin darted sideways into another alley. Rachel and Trusty swerved and saw him hurdle into one of the huts. In there, Rachel crawled out, diving towards the hut. We got him, said Trusty. The fairy landed outside and Serene bolted in, ready to pull her precious puppy away from the goblin. But she steered to a halt on the rug in the middle of the room. It was completely empty. But that is impossible, Serene stammered. We saw him come in here. Goblins cannot just vanish, said Rachel. Maybe Jack Frost gave him enough magic to get to the ice castle, said Trusty. He done it before. But surely the Robin would have used the magic as soon as he saw us, said Rachel. The three fairies stared at each other. The window, said Serene. Perhaps he climbed out that way. But the windows were locked on the inside. There was nothing inside the room. I set the rug on which Serene had steered. The sausage dog fairy's shoulder slumped. Somehow he's got away, she said. I feel as if I've lost widows all over again. Feeling helpless, Trusty bent down to straighten the rug up. That's strange, she said. It's caught on something. She tugged on the rug, but it didn't move. She tucked again and it still didn't move. Try lifting it, said Rachel. Trusty put it upwards. It's heavy, she said, panting. Help me. Together, all three of them put the rug. It's coming, Serene exclaimed. The rug gave way. There was a loud crash and the fairies fell backward. Where the rug had been was a square hole in the floor. It's a trapdoor, said Trusty, amazed. The rug is attached to it, so it flaps into place when the trapdoor shuts. They peered into the dark hole. It was too narrow for them to be able to fly. Stone steps down, led downwards, fading into blackness below. Where do you think it leads? Rachel asked. Her voice was echoed back at her from the hole. Leads, leads, leads. There's only one way to find out, said Serene. Adventure, here we come.